Hey guys, Dave from Nerd Arcade here. Four nerds, by nerds, hanging out with a couple of nerds. Hey, I'm Ryan. Well, you, say, you say that so dismissively. <laughs> nerds! <laughs> Proud to be a nerd. Yeah. Meanwhile, do do do. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Gabe Birch has asked us for some GM tips for running a Supers game because he's getting ready to play Exalted. Uh, from White Wolf, um, it's, it's called Aberrant. So yeah, it's like Aberrant, Aberrant, yeah, yeah, White Wolf, yeah, superheroes game. But before we get into that, maybe we should make a quick mention about the Nerdarchy newsletter, which is going to be in the description below. Basically, you just sign up for that. You'll get some cool GM tips and some other exclusive content, as well as uh, you'll get cued in on how to uh, sign up to game with Nerdarchy and back to a regular scheduled Nerdarchy. So, okay, so we haven't played that game, but we have played uh, we have played some super games. You know, I've played DC from. Uh, Green Ronin? No. Yeah, those two, but uh, May, uh, Mayfield or was it Mayfair, Mayfair games? May, yeah, Mayfair. It was Mayfair back way back in the day. Uh, also, Marvel Phase Rip from TSR. I got to play a little bit of that when you ran it for us, for uh, me and uh, our other brother, and had J Jeremy's character had his wings ripped off, I believe. <laughs> his wings ripped off? Yeah, he had a character with wings that you had a giant monster that you had ripped him off. Yeah. That, that, sound sound like, that, that sounds like something you, you would do back in the day. Doesn't yeah. sound like my DMing style no, at all. No. Not anymore. <laughs> um, uh, I, I've, I've played uh, a handful of different Palladium games, which, you know, some of them are very super superhero esque power we've done the mutants and masterminds in every every different variety and I'm familiar with some of the white wolf stuff um, I, I've, I haven't played that specific um, you know but when you're dealing with superhero games it doesn't matter the system it's the it's the setup that's more of the well you even ran like a, a superheroes you both had superhero games for um, fate. for fate yes mm, yeah or at least you wrote an adventure for one. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I ran it at uh, Philly GamesCon yeah. last, yeah. last year. Um, you know, so, so yeah, so even even Fate, uh, or Fate Accelerated is what I was, I was using that day. Um, you know, you, you've got access to, to all of these different things. So what is Gabe's question? Is he what, what is your tips for running a Supers game? All right. So with, that's with, pretty. I mean, I find I, that part of it's pretty system agnostic. So yeah, uh, you know, so you, you want to, as as a GM, you want to be able to know the, the the powers and the limitations of your players. You know, you, you can't look at oh well, eczema. Just, <laughs> eczema is definitely a, a limitation. You, you can't you can't look at a, at a group of superheroes and a look at a group of adventures in, in a D and D campaign and say oh well, you know, I can put the same kind of threats against them. No, you're you're in a completely different caliber. You know, when you've got someone who's like oh well, I'm just going to fly around the world. Evasion's not really uh, you know a thing that you know is going to be a problem you know oh well i want to go over there i'm going to go over there travels not not going to be a problem for some superheroes but it can be a problem for others you know if you've got someone who's like oh well we had uh in the in the one game like jim was like a giant space slug or something so like he didn't move very fast so unless somebody could lift his massive uh you know weight and then carry who's him who's monster who's sludge monster. sludge yeah mm -hmm. um you know so you've got those kind of things. So, you have to look at the whole the whole picture. What what kind of major things are they able to handle, and what kind of things are are going to really you know be a be a problem for them? Um, like you you have to determine too. Like if you're going to run a street level game, if you're going to run more of a cosmic game or something in between. So yeah, the scope like, of the game. You know, yeah. if, if you're doing um, you know a street level game, you know that could be something like. Kick-Ass or Dresden Files, where it's not quite superheroes. Um, well, it can, it can be, but also like Frank, Daredevil, Frank Miller, Frank Miller, Daredevil would be a perfect like '80s Daredevil, mm -hmm. yeah. Punisher, Batman. You know, they're they're all like street level, although Batman kind of bounces around. Yeah, well, Batman's Batman's street level, but his power level, level, level of, is 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 through the it's over nine thousand for sure. <laughs> nah, that's completely. Yeah. Um, Green Ronin does a really excellent job of breaking down the different superhero ages mm. you know they talk about the silver age was like the like is basically like the dawn of comic books you mm. know with the very early batman and superman or you can even America. do things like dick tracy 
you know, like which is yeah. not a super at all. It's adventure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they you know they have the gold age and the bronze age. The bronze age is like the nineties mm -hmm. where everything had to be edgy and dark extreme. and yeah. Exclamation points and lots of extraneous pouches and belt buckles and big guns. And, and absolutely guns. and misformed legs and <laughs> I felt. I think we're talking about you. Uh, so, yeah. um, my actually uh, big tip for a superheroes game would be: um, superheroes are defined by what? They're villains. You make a villain that's like almost the foil to that character. Like the foil to Superman is a wealthy guy with no superpowers at all, but has access to precious resources like kryptonite that can totally disable Superman and actually make him worse than the... Uh, you know, they pro over the years, they've produced so much kryptonite, I would think they could probably recreate the planet of Krypton if they just put them all together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, you have that, you have, like, Joker, who's, like, the foil to Batman because he's a guy that's just a complete nihilist and, like, you know, just wants to ca cause as much harm and havoc to people. You know, basically, with Flash, you have reverse Flash. Like, they're literally, like, most super villains are the opposite of what the heroes are. So coming up with a really good villain, like, almost helps define your superheroes. I like, uh, you know what I like about a superheroes game? I like the fact that... For one, it's modern day, so mm -hmm. I really think you have to layer in pop culture references, mm -hmm. especially for geeks and nerds. Yeah. It, it just adds to it. And, like, you know, I did some really ridiculous things with my super games uh, in the more recent years. Um, like, you know, one of, one of the adventures was, you know, there was a giant ape that had, you know, kidnapped, uh, you know, an actress and climbed the Empire State Building. With her, you know, and but it was a little bit more to that, you know. It turns out that you know, I I used bubbles, Michael Jackson's pet chimpanzee, and, and you know had it enlarged to a giant ape, mm -hmm. and you know, and bubbles loves watching King Kong, so it was reenacting the scene. So mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't about beating bubbles; it was about oh, it was about solving the problem of, and recognizing that it wasn't a monster that needed to be fought. Was they it, just needed some... a situation. So it was a situation to diffuse. Right. Mm -hmm. um, there was another one where I did, um, I don't know, you know, as, as a kid, I used to love Mr. T, and as a wrestler, the cartoon, uh, the A-team, you know, I, I really idolized the guy. But, you know, and later on, I seen pictures of him where he looked really skinny. Mm, from and, his cancer and all that. Yeah, yeah, like, and he had health issues and stuff. So I decided to make him into a character in my game. Um, not necessarily, like, the villain villain. But, like, so I, I decided, like, he had experimental treatments done to him to mm. help with it. So I had him basically turn into, like, a Hulk or a thing-like mm. you know, creature, you know, and the players had to, like, uh, had to try and, like, subdue him. Mm. Yeah, in the meantime, like, he's going crazy and smashing everything. <laughs> it, you know, uh, and then I did, um... I yeah. did the, the monster truck. Yeah, I, I did a monster truck villain driven by, uh... What was his name? Rebel Yell. Re yeah, yeah, Rebel Yell. So he had like a basically a redneck like guy driving a monster truck, and the monster truck uh, actually uh, it was a redneck white supremacist driving the monster truck. You know the whole like Confederate flag shebang. Because it happened at like a monster truck rally. Yes, yes. And so it was a sentient, demonic, possessed uh, monster truck. truck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like again, like so I drew for for that truck, and they. And they never be able to destroy that truck, no matter how many pieces they break that thing to, it rebuilds. So it's like Christine from uh, Stephen King. Right. Yeah. So, so like, I guess my point is, like, these are all things from my childhood, from pop culture, that I'm able to draw on. You get to things. be way more referential and a little more irreverent in a Supers game than, like, I don't know, the tone of, uh, like, your your average, say, like, medieval fantasy or whatever. It's very serious and kind of austere and you stuffy. Can have, you can have fun with yeah, it. Yeah, you right. can kind of make and, it as ridiculous as you want. You know, with uh, with those specific examples, like all of those things are, you know, you put the work in behind it of why things happened the way they did. You know, if it was a demonic, you know, monster truck, well, it rebuilt itself because that was a, that was based on it, and you had that linkage to, you know, the, the Stephen King Christine. You know, with bubbles, you know, okay, well, it looked like a fighting encounter, but it turned out that fighting wasn't going to solve the problem. You know. And we had to put the pieces together. And, and to be honest with you guys, if, I had two routes I was going to go. I wasn't sure which one I was going with, but later I was going to introduce Michael Jackson as a character. I don't know if he was going to be an undead zombie creature or an alien. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, Well, so, the alien thing, there was you know the, that kind of thing for Men in Black. 
Mm. So they did touch on it there. Uh, did they? Yeah. Uh, I may even subconsciously <laughs> so I have no idea. Yeah. And stealing ideas? Never a problem. Yeah, yeah. I you know, I had um I had one villain dreadlock yeah. and it was like a like a Rastafarian guy except for he had like uh, indestructible uh, dreadlocks, mm. and he could use them. To, they they would grow, and he could he could manipulate them. So it's somewhere, almost like Doctor Octopus, except for with dreads. Or using, yeah. De Deirdre from Justifiles. Yes, so it was a combination of those, and there's actually a character called Medusa. Medusa, yeah, with the hair. yeah, from the Inhumans. So I took all of that, and then I just kind of reflavored a little bit. Uh, so everything from comic books, as you know and understand, like literally if you find somebody with a suite of powers, you could just reskin it to like fit your game. And I think the tone of the game is pretty important too. Like, do you want this more serious or more like ridiculous and irreverent? Like you could have uh, the, all the, the cast of the Muppets like get hit by gamma rays, like and it could be sentient, giant, kind puppets. of cutesy puppets that yeah. you have to contend with that get mutated. In so, some you, know, you, you, you know, as Ryan says, you have to look at what is the scope of your game. You know, Dave talked about you know what is the what is the the thematic you know power level. Are you street street level or are you cosmic? You know if you guys are making if you, if your players are cosmic level superheroes, you need to make cosmic level threats that you know oh same time next week we're gonna have to save the planet again from you know insert you know thing here. Um, and every once in a while you have to you have to throw out that red herring that. Okay, you've established a pattern. Now break your pattern, and they have to do something that that's different from what what they're used to. Um, you know, because superhero games get boring if it's constantly, "Well, I go fight this threat. I go fight this threat. I go fight this threat." I think the real strength of a good supers game is the fact that you can swing from um, you can actually swing from genre to genre as well as you know to lighthearted at the seriousness. Uh, within the scope of the game, fairly easily. Yes. I mean, you know, if it's a real serious game, do you want to go lighthearted and 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 humor and comedy and tunish all the, a lot? No. But if you do it, you know, every once in a while, I think your players will appreciate it and it can be fun. And there's definitely, you know, that trope is definitely shown itself in in um, in comic books in lots of different comic books. It's the imp character, you know. Mm -hmm. The character that shows up that is, you know, is there to be a nuisance, and sometimes they're omnipotent, mm -hmm. and you know, you can't just beat them; you have to outthink them or negotiate with them or whatever. Solve also, the too, um, if your characters are playing with secret identities, you have to have the complications of their secret identities show up, crop up here and there. Yeah, you know, like that's a super important thing. Or like, you know, even like as in your more standard fare um, adventuring characters sort of game, usually, you know, like some relative or friend gets threatened at some point in time and like it's an important thing to do there because again it creates a rescue encounter or a protect encounter is different from just beating up the well and the really interesting thing about with a superhero game is like you can have that it can have that extra layer of complication where not only do they have to protect this person or save this person they still have to keep their identity a secret yeah. yes yeah. you know so if, where, if they are playing secret identity characters yes. it could just be tony stark who everybody knows is iron man yeah yeah, yeah. well in this incarnation anyway yeah but for the longest time he did have a secret identity yeah there was a span of time and eventually he came out as iron man was, was kind of the thing so he came out of the iron man closet he, he did he did out of the iron closet yeah. so now I, I will say that you know something that i, I don't know whether i've actually discuss this with you guys or not but when I was running you know my, my Drizzen Files game a uh, problem that I actually had was when I started the idea for the game I had said okay well since there's a bunch of them I'm gonna make uh, a handful of villainous counterparts and I worked I worked a timetable so whatever you guys were doing for the the quote-unquote week because we were playing you know every week you guys would do something well, so would they. And I realized at a certain point that with all the stuff that they were doing in the background, there wasn't a way for you guys to actually be able to combat everything that they were doing because you guys were brand new fresh. They had already established themselves as villains. So, so you created a, uh, an unwinnable game. Yes. Is essentially what happened. So... I, I had, hates us. He I had, hates us. I had to make make adjustments with what was going on, um, um, because like you as the GM like know everything that's going to happen, so you've create essentially created villains that also know the entire confines of the game. Whereas like we're trying to figure out your intent for what. I mean, it, it, this is another discussion. But as a player, you're trying to figure out the intent of where the story hooks right. really are, and sometimes you're just spinning your wheels because you're playing through it 
as best, best as you as the character can right. do, and you're also trying to portray so, what your character so is. So my recommendation is to avoid that at all costs. You can't you can't have the an established thing continuing to make, you know, progress against with what the, the players are doing because you're gonna work yourself unless you're a uh, much better story weaver than I was, or story writer than I was. Um, I, I wasn't able to. It to also work. ends up being a lot of extra work. And it's, well, that, it, that's <laughs> that's the problem of doing too much work ahead yeah. of time, too. And that, really. that, that's one reason why I've moved away from that particular yeah. DMing style. Because you probably had all this stuff that happened that we never even knew about. Yeah. Correct. Right. So then it's like, well, who did you make it for? Yeah. <laughs> Yourself, yeah. really, right? Yeah. Like you were telling a story without us like even being involved, right? right. Like, I think there's a word yeah. for that. It's called mental masturbation. <laughs> Avoid it at <laughs> all costs. You could lose your eyesight, or do it in the <laughs> you could do it in the privacy of your own own home. But it's not that fun of a game because you're not. It becomes you made the game for yourself and not for your players, as it were. So I mean, because all that stuff you could, have, if you spread out the timetable that we actually discovered it in time, mm -hmm. all that stuff could have still been relevant. Yes, and and I, I like I said, I I had stopped doing that. I had you know very detailed notes for for everything I was working on. So I mean, they were all like, oh, this is a potential plot thread that I could use. So it wasn't completely wasted, but it was things like, all right, I'm now getting. You know, far far too much. They were eighteen months ahead of us. The like the adventuring party. <laughs> eighteen years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I think we've covered a lot of different ground. Yeah. Ground, ground tips, ideas. Uh, you can incorporate into a supers game. A lot of these you can actually use for any kind of game with a little bit of retool and reworking. Um, you know, the final thing is current events. Use them for sure. For sure. With that, you know, in the comments below. Let us know what you guys think. Like, share, and subscribe. You can check us out over on Instagram at Nerdarchy. Or you can uh, check out some funny memes over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.